Advice. Sometimes my mother gives me advice. She tells me to save my money for a rainy day. She says that I should eat my vegetables if I want to be strong when I grow up. She says that you reap what you sow. I didn't know what that one meant, so I asked her. She said that if you are good to people, they will be good to you. If you do bad things, then bad things will come back to you. My mother is always giving me advice. She says that a penny saved is a penny earned. I am still thinking about that one. Some of these things are difficult to understand. My mother is very wise. She says that she has learned from her mistakes. She tells me that she would like me not to make mistakes, but she says that everyone does make mistakes. The important thing is that we learn from our mistakes. My mother says that nobody is perfect. My mother tells my sister that time is precious. My sister wastes time, and my mother doesn't like that. My mother tells me to be true to myself. She says that I should not follow the crowd. I should listen to my own conscience and do what I think is right. She says that it doesn't matter if you fail at something. The important thing is that you try. If you've done your best, then that is all that matters. I listen to my mother. I think she gives very good advice. My mother has a lot of common sense. I hope I am as wise as she is when I have children of my own. Sometimes I wish that she would not give me so much advice. I think that I know what I'm doing. But in the end, I always remember what she has said, and I try to live by the standards that she has set for me. Take the advice that your parents give you; they only have your best interests at heart. The circus. Wow! A big tent was in the middle of the town's parking lot. We were going to a three-ring circus. I couldn't wait for it to begin. Inside and outside of the tent, toys, balloons, and food were being sold. All of the children were so very excited. Inside the tent, we found good seats so we could see everything. The band started to play loud music, and the ringmaster came out with a big, tall hat on his head. In one ring, there were small animals. Dogs, monkeys, and parrots doing tricks. The dogs were dressed in funny clothes, and so were the monkeys. They rode on bicycles, danced, and climbed ladders. There were wild tigers and lions in a big round wire cage. A man with a whip was inside the cage with them. He had them trained to jump through a hoop of fire and to roll over. He even kissed them. He was very brave. During the break in the middle of the circus, funny clowns came out and did silly things. They had happy faces and sad faces. Some had big red noses that honked if you squeezed them. There were rides on elephants too. I didn't go on one because it cost too much money. The last act took up the whole tent. It was the acrobats. They hung from their teeth, their feet, and their necks high up in the air. They also swung high up in the air and flew to each other. It's kind of scary to watch because I was afraid they might fall. I had a very good time at the circus. However, my tummy felt kind of sick from all the cotton candy and junk food I ate. A day at the beach. When the hot summer weather arrives, many people like to cool off by visiting the beach. Often there is a cool breeze that comes off the water, and of course the water itself is cool and refreshing. One of the favorite activities at the beach is building sandcastles. Children use small shovels and pails to move the sand. They can build small forts and castles by carefully forming and shaping the sand.
Building sand castles is a lot of fun, but you shouldn't build them too close to the water. A wave might come and wash your sand castle away. There are also many games that people like to play at the beach. Some people play catch with a small plastic disc called a frisbee. The frisbee glides smoothly through the air. Other people like to play beach volleyball in the soft sand. Some people prefer just to relax on the beach. They like to lie down on a blanket and feel the warm sunshine. I like to sit on the beach with an ice cream cone, but you have to eat it quickly before it melts. Of course, the main attraction of a beach is the water. Many children learn to swim at the beach and enjoy playing in the water. Some people like to swim vigorously. Other people like to relax in the water on an inflatable floating mattress. Other people just wade around in the water as a way to keep cool. When it is a windy day, some people try sports such as surfing. Going to the beach is surely one of the best ways to spend a summer day. University. It's time to sign up for school. This year, Natalie is going to Brock University. She has never been to university before. She is a little bit scared. She hopes she meets nice new friends. Natalie stood in line to get her picture taken. The picture was put on a card. The card was her picture ID, identification. She would use this card if she needed to buy books from the school bookstore, if she wanted to get a book from the library, or if she wanted to use the pool. After all of the signing up and money was paid, Natalie went out to lunch with her mother. Mom, I'm kind of scared about going to school. I'm going to be the youngest kid there. I don't know how to take notes. The teachers might be mean. Natalie rambled on. Her mom just calmed her down and said, "Take one day at a time, Natalie. Worry only about today." Hmm. You're right, Mom. Thanks. Natalie was very scared on the first day of school. She made sure she had all of the books she needed and lots of pens, pencils, and erasers. She walked into the front of the building and went on her way to try and find her classroom. Natalie got through her classes and met a lot of new people, nice people. Her classes seemed to go by really fast, and the day went by even faster. When Natalie got home, she was so excited. She told her mom that classes weren't all that scary. The students and the teachers weren't scary either. Natalie knew that the schoolwork would be hard, but she felt good about the people she had met that day. She knew she'd have a good year. Music. A song comes on the radio. My lips start to move, singing along. My fingers start to snap. My feet begin to tap. The music sinks deep into my soul. I listen to the music as it fills my brain, and I remember when I used to sing. I sang in front of huge crowds. I loved it when they watched me and clapped for me when I was finished. Letting out my feelings when I was sad, mad, happy, or glad was when I would sing. I sang in the shower. I sang in the rain. I sang in church. I sang walking down the street. Music has always been a big part of my life. It seems like I was a baby when I started playing the piano. I would sit on my sister's lap while she played the piano, and I would bang on the keys. I remember sitting beside her and learning how to sing. I sang my little lungs out. As I grew, I listened to other singers on tapes, the radio, and CDs. I took those things that I had heard from different singers and made myself sound like them. Soon, I could take what I had heard all my life and make it into my own sound. I have always liked singing jazz and blues. I don't listen to jazz and blues a lot, however. I listen to pop, rock, classical, and some country.
As you can see, I like many types of music. I have seen musicals too, like Phantom of the Opera and Les Misérables. Those musicals were amazing. They were such bright costumes and stage sets, not to mention the wonderful songs and singing. Music has been on this earth since the beginning of time, and it touches everyone in a different way. I know it has not only touched mine, but is a big part of my very being. My friend in the next office. When I started my job a year ago at the university, I did not know my way around. I did not know where to find anything. I had a million questions. But Diane in the next office took me on a tour, showing me the places to eat, the library, the lecture rooms, where to get a picture ID card, how to get from one building to another. When I had a question, I asked Diane how to use the telephone, where to make copies, where to print with my computer, the location of my mailbox. She teaches as I do. We both spend a lot of time helping students and answering their questions. She giggles a lot. I hear her laugh with her students. Sometimes she asks my advice about her work or about a problem, and I ask her advice. Sometimes she comes into my office and says, "I am really angry. Can I whine to you?" Then she talks about a problem, and I listen. And then she returns cheerfully to her office. Sometimes I go into her office and say, "I'm upset about something that happened. Can I come in for a minute?" Then I grumble to her, and she listens. And then I go back cheerfully to my office. Each of us feels better when we have shared our problems. Then they are no longer problems. Diane is shy in a group of people. She is quiet and does not start a conversation. Everyone around her talks, and she listens. On Friday afternoons, she makes popcorn for everyone. We all sit in the staff room and eat microwaved popcorn and drink tea and talk. We start to relax for the weekend and talk about our plans. She is a good friend. She helps my students when I am not there. She wishes me good luck when I go to a lecture. I am very glad that she can be my friend in the office beside mine. Making cookies. Mmm, something smells good. My friend's mom is making cookies. They are chocolate chip, my favorite. I think I'll go home and ask my mom if we can make cookies too. I run all the way home and rush through the door. I yell, "Mom, mom!" She comes out from her bedroom, her eyes wide. "What?" she answers, a little worried. I breathlessly ask if we can please, pretty please, make cookies. She smiles and says, "I guess so." "Yes," I reply. First, mom tells me to get out the cooking stuff, so I get out the mixer and bowl, the measuring cups and spoons, and the cookie sheets. Then she tells me to get out the recipe book. I remind her that the recipe is on the chocolate chip package, right? She says. Then she asks me to look at the recipe and get out the things we need, like flour, sugar, and butter. We set the oven temperature to three hundred and fifty degrees Fahrenheit. Then we mix all the flour and other stuff ingredients together. Last, we added the chocolate chips. We drop the batter by big teaspoons full onto the cookie sheets. We set the timer for twelve minutes. And just sit back and enjoy the good smell. The buzzer rings. We take the cookies out. Oh, do they look good! We don't even wait for them to cool down. Both mom and I get a big glass of cold milk and two big warm cookies each. Yum yum. Want to join us? Going to the grocery store. Each week, I go to the grocery store to buy food for my family. I get a shopping cart from the front of the store, and I push the cart all around the store. The cart is large, but when I am finished shopping, the cart is nearly full. The grocery store is also called a supermarket. When I go shopping, I start out in the produce section of the supermarket. The produce section is where the fresh fruits and vegetables are kept. 
I like to buy different kinds of fruit, such as apples, oranges, and bananas. The vegetables that I often buy are carrots, peas, and corn. I also buy tomatoes when they are bright red in color. I often buy a bag of potatoes or a bag of rice. After visiting the produce section, I go to the meat section. Here I buy poultry such as chicken and turkey. I often buy seafood, especially fish. I also buy beef and sometimes pork or lamb. I also visit the dairy section, where I can buy milk and cheese. Sometimes I also buy ice cream or yogurt. When I have finished in the meat and dairy sections, I then move to the bakery section. This is where loaves of bread are baked and sold. There are many different kinds of bread in the bakery section. The bakery section also sells pasta. Such as macaroni and spaghetti, and of course you can buy pies, cakes, and cookies in the bakery section. These foods are very sweet and tasty. I also pick up a few other things at the supermarket, such as soap, toothpaste, and cleaning supplies. But sometimes I forget to buy something that I plan to get. Maybe I should make a list of the things I need to buy. First date, ring ring. The phone is ringing. My mother answers it. Hello, she says. It is for me. When I pick up the phone, I hear a boy's voice. It is a boy I go to school with. This boy is very nice, and he is cute too. He asks me if I want to go out for dinner with him tonight. I say yes. He's going to pick me up at 5:30 p.m. in the evening. He has a nice red car. Before he picks me up, I have to find an outfit to wear. I am nervous and don't know what to wear, so my sister picks out an outfit for me. I feel excited and have the sensation of butterflies in my stomach. The inside of my hands are damp too. I put on my outfit and do my hair. My sister gives me some nice clips to put in my hair. Ding dong, the doorbell buzzes. My date is here. I hurry to the door so I can greet him. He tells me that I look nice and that we are going to a place called M T Bellies. When we arrive at M T Bellies, there is loud music playing. A smiling waitress comes who serves us our food. I order a large Caesar salad. My date orders steak. When it arrives, the food looks and is delicious. The waitress asks us if we want dessert after we've finished, but we are too full, so we ask for our bill to pay. My date pays for the meal. I brought money just in case we would share the cost. When we leave the restaurant, we go for a walk by the river. It is a beautiful night. I am enjoying my first date. I am laughing and having fun. It is time for us to go home, so my date takes me home. I smile and thank him for the great time. I hope he'll ask me out again. Stars in the midnight sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. This is a little poem song I always say when I'm outside and I see the stars. When I see the first star of the night, I always say this one: Star light, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Do you have a special thing to say about the stars? Stars are beautiful, bright spots in the sky. Stars are usually seen at night when it is dark. We can't see them in the daytime because the sun is so bright, the brightest star of all. I like staying up late just to look at the stars. 
One time I was outside at midnight, and the stars seemed to sparkle and dance. They really did look like diamonds dancing in the sky. If you watch the stars long enough, you may see a falling star or a shooting star. I have seen both. A falling star is where the star just seems to drop, and it leaves a trail of what appears like stardust. A shooting star is very beautiful. It shoots across the sky, leaving a long trail of colorful stardust. Shooting stars seem to brighten up the whole sky. They usually seem quite close to Earth. Have you ever watched the stars and got the urge to reach out and touch them, or even join them in their secret dance? I wonder what it'd be like to see a star up close. Would it look like the moon? Maybe one day when I am older, I will go up in a rocket ship and visit the dancing stars in the midnight sky. Health. Our health is very important to us. People can have good jobs, money, or good looks. However, if they become sick, those things don't mean a thing. It is wonderful to feel good. Feeling good isn't just about our body; it is also about our mind and spirit. We need to feel good in every area of our life. One of the things we can do to be healthy is to get enough sleep. If we don't sleep well or enough, it hurts our body. It is during sleep that our body restores itself. Everybody knows we should also eat good foods. We need milk products, meats, fruits, and vegetables, and breads and cereals. We shouldn't eat too much fat or sugar things either. Of course, we just shouldn't eat too much at all. Another thing that is very important is water. Most people. And we need to keep that replaced with good water, often. Exercise is very good for both our body and mind. It is good for our heart, lungs, muscles, and bones. It gets oxygen to our brain to help us think better. It can help us be smarter. Doing things that we believe are right and good gives us peace inside. It makes us nicer people and is good for our spirit. When we do what we know is right, it helps to reduce stress, which isn't good for any part of us. When we take care of our body, mind, and spirit, we feel good all over and inside too. What a beautiful world this would be if we could all work at doing these things for ourselves and also trying to be a help to others. The musician. There once was a little girl. Named Rain Angel, she loved to sit at the piano and play. Rain Angel was a very gifted girl. She had a voice that gave people shivers, and she loved to sing. As Rain got older, she continued to love music. Rain became involved in the choirs and bands at her high school. She loved performing in front of people. She couldn't help but feel the sense of power she had when she was up on stage, and there was always loud clapping when she finished a song. Rain soon went out on her own and looked for someone that could help her become famous. Rain wanted to share her talent with the world. She felt that her special talent for music helped people feel good. Rain went out into the big world, and she did very well. She was always performing her best, and someone finally noticed her. Her new agent helped her to make her first album. Rain became famous because she never quit trying. Rain loved her new way of life. She continued singing and playing her piano. She was even taught how to write her own music. Rain Angel had always dreamed of becoming a celebrity. She always remembered her friends and family when she was famous because they had always believed in her. Rain Angel strove for a faraway place, and it became her reality. She always believed that what she wanted to become was her choice. She believed that if you have the strength and determination, you can make your dreams come true. Halloween.
Ghosts, goblins, witches, princes and princesses, kings, queens, skeletons. So many of these things are walking down my street. Oh no! They are coming to my door. The doorbell chimes, and I slowly open the door. There, standing on my front porch, is a little ghost and a cute little witch. They hold up a bag and say, "Trick or treat." I put candy into their bags, and they smile and say, "Thank you." Every October thirty-first is Halloween. That is when children dress up as different things. Not just funny people, but things like animals or fruits or vegetables. They go from door to door and get different candies or little toys from the people in the houses. Some children who are not very nice will do naughty things to houses where people are not home, like throwing eggs at their windows. I think that is bad. Sometimes people decorate their houses for this day. Some of the houses can be pretty scary. They'll have scary noises coming from a tape recorder too. However, it's only for a few days out of the year, so we may as well have fun with it. This year, my brother is dressing up as a skeleton, and I'm dressing up as a bride. I am wearing my mom's wedding dress. It is fun dressing up in costumes and putting on lots of makeup. Sometimes our friends don't even know who we really are. The best part of Halloween is the candy, of course. I once got an entire garbage bag full of candy. My mom and dad took it away because I was eating too much. Mom gave me a piece of candy every day, though. If you eat too much candy, you can get a stomach ache. You need to remember to brush your teeth often too, so you don't get cavities. Still, that candy sure does taste good. Well, it's time to go trick or treating. So off I go, door to door, getting yummy candy and hearing people say, "Oh, aren't you pretty?" New Year's, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! What is New Year's? Well, to me, a new year is when the date of the year changes. This year it is 2001, and on December 31st at midnight, it will change to 2002. I wonder who invented the changing of the years, and how it was made the way it is. It must have been someone a long time ago, since it's already 2001. When New Year's comes closer, a lot of people talk about New Year's resolutions. I don't bother making resolutions because I never do them anyway. And the ones I do make are usually ones that will happen anyway. I guess it's just common sense. The biggest reason why I like New Year's is because of the fireworks that we have here in Canada and many other countries too. You should see some of the fireworks that go off. There are many different colors. There's pink, blue, purple, yellow, green, red, even white, silver, and gold. Fireworks make loud bangs, squeals, siren sounds, and sometimes all at once. There are lots of different sounds, but I can't even explain what they are all like. Fireworks are best when it's very dark outside. They light up the whole sky. Sometimes they look as though they are going to fall on you. I like New Year's because it's fun in other ways, but the fireworks are the best. You can buy fireworks to use for your own fireworks show. However, you have to be careful that no one gets burned or hurt. Usually, there are parties at New Year's. Some people really dress up fancy and even wear masks. They don't know who one another is until midnight when they take their masks off. As midnight comes very close, everybody begins to count down, and then everyone yells out "Happy New Year's!" and bangs pots and pans, or rings bells, or honk horns. Join me in the countdown on New Year's Eve. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! More music. 
I like music. I have always liked music. Even when I was very young, I liked music. I like to listen to it and to make it. When I was a little girl, listening to nice music would sometimes make me cry. That may seem silly, but the music was so pretty that I cried. As I grew older, I started to take piano lessons. I was not very good at first, but after a while, I got better. Also, as I grew older, I started to take violin lessons. I did not sound very good at all at first, but I improved. When I was a teenager in high school, I made sure I had music classes every year. Those were the classes I enjoyed most of all. Everyone loved music, and we had a lot of fun. I started to take private singing lessons while I was in high school too. I also sang in the choir, played in a band, and acted in plays in high school. The plays were all musicals, so I got to sing and dance and enjoy music that way also. It was so much fun pretending to be other people. When I finished high school, I went to university to learn how to be a music teacher. That was a lot of fun because every day I was with other people who loved music as much as I do. Mostly, I played the piano, but I also learned how to play the drums, a saxophone, a trombone, a French horn, a clarinet, a flute, which I really was not very good at, and a viola. I took more singing lessons too. We did not have plays to sing and act in, but I sang in the university choir. Some years I played the piano for other students who were learning other instruments. One year I played duets with another girl who was also there to play piano. She and I made sure we played fast, funny songs, so we really enjoyed ourselves doing it. Now I am a music teacher. I do not have a lot of students, not as many as I used to have anyway. I still find it very rewarding. I like to see people who start off not knowing very much, if anything, and go on to be very good at creating music. I still love listening to music. Also, music makes me happy when I am sad. It makes me want to dance or sing when I'm already happy. Mostly, music just makes me glad that I am me and that music is alive in me. Babies. My baby is asleep in my arms. Her soft cheek rests against my chest, while her sweet breath puffs gently on my skin. Her tiny lips are puckered a bit. Her little eyelids flutter. I wonder what she dreams about as she sleeps. Does she dream? I have heard her whimper in her sleep. Sometimes she awakens with a scream. What is so scary in her little baby dreams? Once I heard her giggle as she slept. Her dreams must have been sweet that day. I have had three babies. The one I am holding now is my last one. My other babies are grown up more and now at school. I love their childish play and laughter. I miss their baby dimples and their baby sounds and smells. There is such joy in the birth of a new baby. We hear their first little cry, telling us all is well with their small world. We feel their newborn skin wrinkled, soft, and slightly damp. We feel each little limb, and are filled with wonder and humility. Life is good as baby takes its first food from its mother. Family gathers around, each waiting to hold and love this newest member. Each time the baby cries. Its mum worries, and their bond becomes stronger. Babies have their own special smell. Some have described it as milk and innocence. It is the sweetest smell on earth, I think. It cannot be copied. Somehow, it disappears as baby grows. I love to hear my baby talk. Once in a while, I can even understand a little bit. She is so serious in her baby talk that I just have to pick her up and hug her. I love to hear her say, "Mummy." 
When my baby is tickled, or when the dog or her big brothers do something funny, it is so sweet to hear her baby laugh. It's such a cute little giggle. Sometimes she laughs so hard, her face turns red, tears come to her eyes, and she falls down weak with the laughter. Those who watch her can't help but laugh too. I hope she always laughs so easily. The parents watch with pride and joy as baby grows and has many firsts. There is the first time baby sleeps through the night, rolls over, smiles, laughs, hugs and kisses. Then there is the first tooth, crawling, first step and first word. With each new first, the baby becomes less a baby. These steps are a little sad to parents too, because they know they're losing their baby. However, to a mother, even an adult child is still her baby. My baby is not perfect. Sometimes she gets mad or whines for no reason, but to me, she is still beautiful. Her smiles more than make up for her tears. Her hugs wipe away when she's been bad. I intend to cherish each moment with my baby while I can. My parents. My parents live in England, and I live in Canada. I don't see them often. They used to come and visit on a plane, and we would pick them up at Toronto Airport. But now they are older and say the flight is too long for them. I went to visit them last year with my son, their grandson. They live by the ocean, and we could hear the sound of the waves through the bedroom window and see the blue water of the English Channel. There is an island with a castle on top in the bay. We walked many times on the beach and picked up pebbles and feathers. We visited the island and walked up the steep hill to the castle. My mother likes to cook. She makes delicious cakes and pies. We went for a hike and picked wild blackberries. She made them into a pie that smelled so good coming out of the oven and tasted so good on our plates. She has many cookbooks with recipes from all over the world and likes to try new things. She can make pastry very easily and rolls it with a rolling pin quickly. When I tried to make pastry, it sticks to the rolling pin. It has holes at the bottom of the pie, and it tastes like a rock. Her pastry is crisp and tender. My father likes to garden. He grows lettuce, carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, cucumbers, and many flowers. When my mother was very ill last year, she had to stay in bed. He planted roses outside her bedroom window. So she could open the curtains and see them. Their house has a small room with windows all around, and they plant seeds there in winter in small pots. The warmth from the sun makes the seeds grow, and in spring they are a good size to be planted outside. In the house beside them and in the house in front of them, there are older ladies whose husbands have died. These ladies do not drive. So my father takes my mother and the two ladies to the town for shopping every week. He helps one find her groceries because she cannot see well. He helps her take tapes of books from the library so she can listen to books instead of reading them because of her eyes. He helps them cut their grass and fix anything that is broken in the house. I am very proud of my parents. They are over eighty years old and often hurt when they move around. But still, they help other people and they help each other. They have been married for over fifty years, but still, my father loves my mother enough to plant roses for her to cheer her up when she was ill. Bedtime. I am almost nine years old, and my bedtime is eight thirty p.m. I think that is so unfair. I think I am old enough to stay up until at least nine p.m. My parents say that I have to go to bed early because I have school the next day. I can't wait until I am grown up and can stay awake as long as I want. 
Even though I think I should be able to go to bed later, I do like our nighttime routine. At about 8.15 p.m., my mom sends us upstairs to put on our pajamas. When we come back downstairs, we read together. Sometimes mom will read to us, and sometimes we will read to her. If dad is not working, he will sometimes read too. Mostly it is mom we read with, though. When we read, mom helps us with words we cannot read. We have to try and sound the word out. But if we are really stuck, she will help us. If we come to a place in our reading where we do not understand the meaning of what was written, we stop reading and look at mom. She will tell us what it means or help us figure it out on our own. After we are finished reading, we say goodnight to everyone in the house. First, we say goodnight to mom and give her a hug and a kiss. Then we do the same for dad, then our little sister, and then our dog. Afterwards, we go upstairs and brush our teeth. I have to do special stretching exercises for the muscles in my chest and legs, or I get pains when I run and play. I do my stretching before I get into bed. After my exercises, either my brother or I turn off the lights. We share a bedroom, so we take turns turning the light off. Before we get into bed, we say our prayers. After we get into our beds, my brother and I talk to each other for a long time. We tell each other about our day or about what we hope will happen in the future, about our friends and all sorts of other important things. After a while, we get so tired we just fall asleep in the middle of talking. Even though we go to bed at 8.30 p.m., we talk so long we don't go to sleep until about 10 o'clock p.m. I still do not know why I have to go to bed so early when I'm not even tired. Why do I like mathematics? Sometimes there is a problem in life that has no answer. Perhaps a child has trouble learning. Perhaps someone becomes ill. Perhaps there was love, but now there is conflict. These problems are hard to solve. There is no single answer. Many people have opinions on what is the best answer. But in mathematics, there is an answer. A single answer that is right. There is no doubt. There is no argument. This answer is right. If we ask, what is 5 plus 7? The answer is 12. If we ask, how do you raise a child? The answer would depend on the child and the parents. Sometimes there is more than one way to reach an answer. Imagine we want to find the area of a triangle. The triangle has a right angle. The two sides surrounding the right angle are 20 millimeters and 30 millimeters. The formula for the area of a triangle is one half of base height. We could consider the 20 millimeter side as the base and 30 millimeters as the height. We could consider the 30 millimeter side as the base and the 20 millimeter side as the height. Both ways would produce the same answer. The area is 300 square millimeters. Alternatively, we could consider the base as the third side of the triangle, and then we would have to draw a height and measure it. The height would be neither 20 nor 30. But still, we would end up with the same answer. In math, the answer does not change. Another reason I like math is the way it brings order. There can be a whole set of numbers or a whole set of measurements that mean nothing until mathematics organizes them into a pattern. An average number can be found. Graphs can be drawn. The spread of the numbers and probabilities of a certain number happening can be calculated. This is like having a whole lot of dirty dishes after supper. Applying math is like washing and sorting the dishes and putting them back into the cupboard. Math is a powerful tool. Math should be our friend, and we will find more ways to use it to better our lives. My Sister's Visit to Canada My sister had never been to Canada 
but came for a visit last April. I picked her up at the airport in Toronto and drove her through the traffic and multi-lane highways, past the grapevines and peach trees to Niagara Falls, where I live. She was very tired from the flight and soon slept. The first day, we walked to see the falls. The spray from the falls drifts high into the air and across the people standing to watch. There are people from all over the world watching the water and using their cameras. Because it was April, there was still ice beside the water, huge chunks of ice that looked like white rocks. In the river, there were floating pieces of ice moving downstream. The next day, we went to the town where the Niagara River joins Lake Ontario. The weather was warm. We walked a long way, and our feet were hot, so we went down to the edge of the water to put our feet in. One toe in was enough. The water was so cold it made our feet ache. A piece of ice drifted beside our feet. I put one foot in for a second, then out, as the pain of the cold went right through me. My sister could not understand how it could be so warm, but there was still ice. Another day, we went to see my daughter. She is living on a farm, an hour's drive away. We walked through her trees. The buds were starting to turn into leaves. We stopped and looked at the spring wildflowers. We climbed across a creek by walking over a fallen tree. We saw the footprints of raccoons by the water. There was fresh air and sunshine and blue sky. On the way home, we stopped for hamburgers and fries at a drive through restaurant. She had never been to a drive through restaurant before. Then we went to a donut shop. There are no donut shops where she lives. There was a choice of twenty different types of donuts, some round, some with holes, some with frosting, some with jam inside. Each was different. The days passed quickly, and soon it was time to take her back to the airport. Some of the trees now had leaves. Some of the tulips were now blooming. It was hard to say goodbye to my sister. I hope we can visit again soon. My first job. My first real job was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co-op. That meant we could work part of the time instead of going to school. It would count as a credit towards our diploma. The place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them too. One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big, long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop. Made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style, for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience, and helped me get my next job with the United States Navy. That was fun too. A summer Sunday. Today the sun was warm. The sky was blue with a few white clouds. 
It was a good day to pick strawberries. It was a good day to go to the beach. I drove to a pick-your-own farm where people can pick their own fruit and buy it. There, the fruit is very fresh and delicious. The owner of the farm gave everyone a row to pick their strawberries. Everyone was wearing sun hats. I knelt down on the straw between the rows and picked the big, juicy red berries. I tasted one. It was warm from the sun. When I bit into it, the juice was sweet and strong. When three big pails were full, I went to pay for them and picked up some recipes for some strawberry desserts. I packed two of the pails in a cooler with some ice, and the other one we would eat at the beach. I met my daughter at the beach. She had a soft pink blanket on the sand. This beach is beside a lake, and across the lake, about fifty kilometers away, the large city can sometimes be seen. Today, the wind blew cooler air across the lake over the people on the beach. There were children playing in the water. One man helped his son dig holes in the sand, and the water ran into the holes. One lady held her children's hands and walked down into the water. Families climbed over the rocks and sat on the last rock where the water was deep. Teenagers rode bicycles and rollerblades along the path beside the beach. Adults walked and ran along this path, carrying water bottles around their waists. We sat on the blanket and ate sandwiches of meat and lettuce and strawberries from the pail. We talked and read books and lay in the sun, relaxing. We wore sunscreen, but our skin was getting hot. How cold was the water? We walked across the sand that almost burned our feet to the edge of the water. She went right in and lay down, floating. I put my toes in and felt the chill through my body. I went up to my knees, then my thighs, but that was far enough. My whole body was cooled down. I headed back to the blanket to lay in the sun again. Soon it was time to go home. She was coming to my house for supper. We drove down the highway with the windows open and our hair blowing in the warm breeze. We cut the strawberries up and made a strawberry dessert with cake and ice cream. We sat outside in the backyard under the maple trees with the birds singing around us and ate our supper. It was a perfect ending to a relaxing summer day. Thanksgiving. An important holiday in North America is held during the fall or autumn season of the year. This holiday is called Thanksgiving. At this time of year, people join with their relatives to reflect upon their good fortune. Thanksgiving is a holiday that has a long history in North America. It was first celebrated when English settlers arrived in the eastern part of what is now the United States. During the 17th century, when they survived the first hard year, they celebrated and gave thanks to God. They invited some of the native people to their Thanksgiving celebration because the native people had helped them to survive during the hard winter. The tradition of celebrating Thanksgiving continued and spread throughout North America. Each fall, during the time of the autumn harvest. People celebrated Thanksgiving. They gave thanks for the food of the harvest and for all the good things in their lives. Today, the tradition of Thanksgiving celebration continues. Families gather to eat a large bird called a turkey. They also eat pumpkin pie. This is a sweet dessert that is made from a large orange vegetable that grows on the ground. In the United States. Thanksgiving is celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, but the following day, Friday, is also a holiday, and then comes the weekend. In Canada, Thanksgiving is celebrated on the second Monday of October. 
The reason for the earlier celebration in Canada is that the weather is colder than in the United States. This means that the harvest happens earlier in Canada, so Thanksgiving is held at an earlier date. But in both countries, Thanksgiving is a very pleasant time of year. Learning to drive. Each year, many young people learn to drive a car. For many people, learning to drive is important because the car is an important method of transportation in many places. Before learning to drive a car, it is important to understand the rules of the road. A beginning driver should already understand the many signs that are found along the roads. Also, the student driver should know the many rules about changing lanes, turning, stopping, and many other aspects of driving. In addition, the driver should be familiar with the way the car is operated. It is important to know how to use the lights, signals, brakes, accelerator, and steering wheel. When a person starts learning to drive, it may take some time to become skillful. It takes some practice to become an expert in driving a car. One must become familiar with steering, speeding up, and slowing down. At first, it is good to practice driving in a large open space, such as an empty parking lot. Here, one can practice without being a danger to anyone. When a person gains some skill in driving, it is then safe enough to practice driving on a road. Of course, a student driver must still be very careful. He or she should always have an expert driver in the car with him or her. Many beginning drivers take driving lessons from professional instructors who can teach safe driving techniques. Eventually, the young driver is ready for a driving test. Which is needed to obtain a regular driver's license. This test is supervised by a government official. In the driving test, the driver must show that he or she can control the car with great skill by being able to make turns and to park the car in small spaces. But he or she must also show respect for the rules of the road by driving at a proper speed and obeying all traffic signs and signals. Of course, even when one has obtained a driver's license, it is always important to drive carefully and responsibly. Snow. Snow is the white substance that falls to the ground during cold weather conditions. Each tiny piece of snow, called a snowflake, is a very small amount of water that has frozen into an unusual shape. During the winter months, huge numbers of snowflakes fall to the ground, covering the land in a white blanket of snow. In many parts of the world, people never see any snow. Snow only falls when there is moisture in the air, and when the temperature falls below the freezing point of water, which is zero degrees Celsius. During the winter, snow falls instead of rain. One advantage of snow is that it allows many fun outdoor activities. Children like to play in the snow. For example, they may make a snowman by rolling snow into a large ball and then placing these balls of snow on top of each other in the shape of a person. Another fun activity in the snow is skiing. Skis are very long, thin, flat pieces of hard material that one wears on one's feet. Wearing skis allows a person to slide along the surface of the snow. People can ski down the side of a hill, traveling at great speeds. Many people find the sport of downhill skiing to be very exciting. Some people like to ski along flat ground, often traveling great distances. This sport, called cross-country skiing, is an excellent way to develop physical fitness. Of course, snow also causes some problems. Snow can make driving dangerous because falling snow makes roads slippery, 
and on a windy day, blowing snow can make it difficult to see very far. It can also be a lot of work to remove snow from the roads and sidewalks. Snow is a heavy substance, and it must be cleared away using a shovel or a large machine. Many people love the beauty of the land when it is covered by snow. The white covering of snow over the fields and trees can give a feeling of peace and calm. If you have never seen snow before, you should someday experience this strange and wonderful substance. Christmas. In most Western countries, Christmas is the biggest holiday of the year. People gather with their families to celebrate this day, which occurs on December twenty-fifth each year. The holiday of Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. In the Christian religion, Jesus Christ is recognized as the Son of God. During the Christmas season, many people celebrate the events of the birth of Jesus Christ. For example, they recall the three wise men who visited Jesus Christ shortly after his birth. Also, they recall that Jesus Christ was born in a manger, a place where horses are kept, because his parents could not find a place to stay. In Western countries, Christmas is also celebrated by many people who are not religious. People view Christmas as a time for being together with one's relatives. Children, parents, and grandparents gather to exchange presents, and to eat special foods. The tradition of giving gifts at Christmas is unusual in one way. When children go to bed on the evening before Christmas, they hang large socks called stockings in their house. When they wake up on Christmas morning, the stockings have been filled with toys and candy. According to tradition, the presents have been given by a fat man who wears a white beard and a red suit. This man, called Santa Claus, flies around the world in a sled that is pulled by reindeer. He stops at each house and flies down the chimney to deliver his presents. In the weeks before Christmas, children are usually very well behaved. Their parents tell them that Santa Claus will only give presents to children who are good. Another Christmas tradition is the Christmas tree. People put a small tree inside their house and decorate it with various pretty objects. Nowadays, most people use an artificial tree instead of a real tree. The tradition of the Christmas tree is actually older than Christmas itself. The people of Europe celebrated the beginning of the winter season in this way, even before Christianity reached Europe. Christmas is certainly one of the most important and most enjoyed holidays in Western countries. The planets of our solar system. The planet on which we live is called. The Earth, our planet, is constantly moving around the sun, and each year the Earth travels all the way around the sun. But there are many other planets that also travel around the sun. Together with the sun, the planets, and various other bodies, the Earth is part of our solar system. The planet that is closest to the sun is Mercury. Mercury is extremely hot. And it is much smaller than the Earth. The second planet from the Sun is Venus. Venus is about the same size as the Earth. Venus is also very hot. The Earth is the third planet from the Sun. The Earth is unusual among the planets because it has such a large moon. The Earth is bigger than the Moon, but the Moon is still quite large. It takes about one month for the Moon to travel around the Earth. The fourth planet from the Sun is Mars. Mars is known for its red color. Mars is smaller and colder than the Earth. Mars has two very small moons. After the planet Mars, there are many small bodies called the asteroids.
These rocky objects are much smaller than the planets. The first four planets are all made of rock and metal. The remaining planets, however, are mostly made of frozen gases. The fifth planet is called Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet. It has many moons that travel around it, and it also has a large red spot. The sixth planet is called Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet, and it is famous for the wide rings that surround it. These rings are made up of many smaller objects that are found in the same area. The seventh planet is called Uranus. The eighth planet is called Neptune. These planets are also gas giants, but they are smaller than Jupiter and Saturn. Both Uranus and Neptune are so far from the Sun that scientists only discovered these planets during the past few hundred years using telescopes. The other planets had all been visible to curious people for many thousands of years. The ninth planet is called Pluto. Pluto is very small, and it is much more rocky than the gas giants. Some scientists believe that Pluto is not really a planet at all. They suggest that Pluto is the largest of many asteroids that are found at the edge of the solar system. The solar system is a vast place. So far, people have not traveled beyond the moon. But perhaps some day, human astronauts will visit the other planets of our solar system. Family. What does the word family mean to you? The easiest way to define family is to talk about who you are related to. Usually, there is a mom and a dad, and children who are brothers and sisters. This would be the core family. Then there is the extended family, which would include grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, nieces, and nephews and in-laws. People married to your brothers or sisters, husband or wife. However, I think the word family has a much deeper meaning. The word family brings words to my mind like. Love, support, help, kindness, fun, love, trips, closeness, love, forgiving, sharing, love, understanding, respect, and love. You'll notice one word that is repeated over and over again: love. I believe if a family has real love for one another, they will be able to overcome any problems they may have. Actually, they may not have too many problems if they all love and respect one another. However, there are things that cannot be helped, like death, sickness, or accidents. It is during those hard times that a family's love. Helps them to go through those experiences. We had quite a few children in my family. There were brothers and sisters, which included an adopted brother, and a number of foster children too. I was also very fortunate that I had both my mom and dad to live with, and do things like vacations together. We had a lot of fun. And there were some times of tears too. Above all, we love one another. Family is a wonderful thing. I am so lucky. My first job. My first real job was during my last year of high school. I had taken classes in various business subjects. In that last year of high school, we could do a co-op. That meant. We could work part of the time instead of going to school. It would count as a credit towards our diploma. The place I got a job was at a men's tailor shop. The owners were a very nice older German couple. They had two other men working for them too. 
One of the men had had brain surgery for cancer. He had a big, long scar all around the top of his head. He told me all about it. He was always happy and full of fun. I thought he was very brave. The tailor shop made suits to order. One of the salesmen would measure the man, and the customer would choose a fabric and style, for he or his wife liked. The people in the back of the shop would then cut and sew the suit. The suits cost a lot of money. There were also suits already made that the customer could buy instead if they wished. They could also rent suits or tuxedos for weddings or parties. I worked at a little desk. I answered the phone, wrote letters, filed papers, and did some bookkeeping. It was about a mile walk from my school to work. I passed many clothing shops. That wasn't good because I spent a lot of my money that I earned in those shops. I worked at the tailor shop for almost a year. It was a good experience and helped me get my next job with the United States Navy. That was fun too. First trip away from home. Today I'm going to my friend's house. Her name is Valerie. This is going to be my first trip away from home without my parents. My dad is driving me to Valerie's house, and I'll be staying there for two weeks. Her mom will drive me back home. It takes about one and a half hours to get there. I have to pack enough clothes for play, work, and church. I hope I'll pack the right things. Of course, I have to remember my toothbrush and hairbrush. Valerie lives on a farm. I'll be helping her dad with milking the cows. I think we'll play up in the hayloft after we have helped put the bales into the barn. We'll be all itchy when the job is done. There are a lot of things to do on a farm. Her mum is a good cook, and will feed us well. There is a nice pond where we can go swimming. I mustn't forget my bathing suit. I wonder if the farm dog comes into the pond too. That would be funny. My dad and mum are giving me money just in case we go shopping. I hope we do go shopping because I want to buy lots of candy. I won't tell my mum that. Oh dear, I hear Dad yelling. Let's go. I haven't even finished packing my things yet. I guess I better stop writing this now and get busy fast. Bye. My job. I work at a conservation park called Balls Falls. I've only worked there for three weeks now. I am a tour guide. And I tell people the history of all the old buildings there. Somebody told me that one of the houses I work in is haunted. Now I get chills every time I walk into that house. My boss told me that the stories aren't real, but I have an active imagination. Balls Falls is very beautiful. It has two different waterfalls: the upper falls and the lower falls. There used to be tons of water cascading over them, which turned a big water wheel to grind grain. However, through the years, the amount of water has really lessened. I love working at Balls Falls because I get to work outside a lot. I'm getting a tan. In July and August, I will be working with kids there at a day camp. I am getting ready now, making different crafts. And thinking up fun new games to play, I can't wait to start working with them. I think that will be the best part of the summer. I will be going to work tomorrow. I usually have to work from 9 a.m. to 4:30 p.m. I also like the people I work with. They are very nice. Come to Balls Falls, and I'll give you a tour. My hobby. Let's see. Today I might go fly a kite, or maybe go for a swim. It is hot outside, and I don't know what to do. My mum tells me that I should do something 
that I like doing on hot days. Since our house is nice and cool, I guess I'll stay inside and work on my hobby. My hobby is something that not a lot of people do. I make and collect bookmarks. To make my bookmarks, I use stickers and special art pencils to draw. I buy the stickers at a mall, usually in a card store. The art pencils are bought in an art store. To make the bookmarks, I start with a piece of paper. I measure out how big I want the bookmark to be with a ruler. I once made a bookmark so big that it couldn't even be used in a very big book. After I measure it, I draw a line so that I can cut it straight. Sometimes I use fancy scissors that cut zigzag or frills. Then I start to decorate them. I like to draw cartoons and flowers on my bookmarks. Sometimes I even put real flowers on them. A lot of the time, I write little sayings on the bookmarks. I like to give my bookmarks to friends and family. Sometimes I even sell my bookmarks to people. I like my hobby. I can draw whatever I want on the bookmarks. Maybe sometime in the future, I will be a famous bookmark maker, and even have my own store. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, I'd travel the world. I would go to the highest mountain. I would swim the deepest sea. I would probably buy a lot of clothes because I love clothes. More than anything, though, I would want to visit Ireland. I want to see the rolling hills and the green, green grass that everyone talks about. When I think of Ireland, I think of where my family came from many years ago. I am almost all Irish, and I would love to see my family over in Ireland. If I had a million dollars, I would buy a Mustang or a Pontiac Sunbird car. I would buy a nice house with a big backyard and an outdoor and indoor pool. I would love to take my family wherever they wanted to go. I would buy them wonderful presents too. However, I know that money does not buy happiness. It does not buy you friends or family. It may bring some happiness only for the moment, but in the long run, your family is what will be there for you if you love them and are there for them. If I had to pick between a million dollars and my family, I would pick my family. The million dollars is a nice dream. If that dream ever comes true and I do get a lot of money, I hope I would use it wisely. A picnic. What a great day for a picnic! We're not only having a picnic; we're having a big bike ride too. We did this last year with a lot of friends. Also, it was really fun. We meet quite early in the morning in a pretty little town. The town is where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario in Canada. The town's name is Niagara on the Lake. Then all of the people, fifty or more, get on their bikes or rollerblades. We go on a bike path beside the river. The path we take is about eleven kilometers or six miles long. There are a lot of people using the path too. We usually stop for an ice cream treat near the end, or where we turn around to go back to our cars. It is just before the park where we will have our picnic, and a steep hill. Many of the men and boys go up the hill. Most of the women and children go back to their cars. The ride takes about two hours plus whatever time we take at the ice cream store. After the ride is finished, we go to the park. We have a delicious potluck lunch. Potluck 
means everyone brings some food to share with the others. We eat, rest, talk, and laugh. After we've cleaned up, some of us climb the tower that is there, remembering a war at that place and its general. It is a steep climb, over one hundred steps. We usually end the day with a fun game of baseball or soccer. Finally, we pack up our stuff, tired and dirty. We head for home with good memories swimming in our heads. Working in my yard, I live in a house that has a small yard around it. In my yard, there is a lawn and a garden. There is also a sidewalk that leads to my front door, and a driveway that leads to my garage. Throughout the year, I work to maintain my yard. During the summer, I cut the grass that grows in my yard using a lawnmower. I like the smell of the grass when it has just been cut, but it's better not to cut the grass too short. When the weather is dry, I also put water on the lawn and garden, so that the grass and flowers can grow. During the autumn, many leaves fall from the trees in my yard. I use a rake to collect the leaves from the lawn. Then I can put the leaves into bags. I can use the leaves to make fertilizer. When I was a kid, I didn't like the job of raking leaves, but now I don't mind it. Another job during the autumn is to remove flowers from the garden before cold weather arrives. During the winter, there is no work to do in the lawn or garden because they are covered in snow. But I need to keep the snow off my sidewalk and driveway. Whenever it snows, I use a shovel to clear the snow from the sidewalk and the driveway. Sometimes it snows a lot. If I didn't shovel the snow, it would soon be impossible to get into my house. During the spring, the snow melts. I clean up my yard by sweeping away the dirt. And by removing weeds from the lawn and garden, I also put flowers back into the garden. It's nice to see them again after the long, cold winter. When spring comes, the grass grows very quickly, so I need to cut the grass quite often. Working in the yard can be very satisfying work. It's so nice when the lawn and garden are looking green and healthy. Early morning. <gasps> Yawn. I am so tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I wish I could sleep in until noon. My mom has to come into my room and shake my feet. Get up, you lazy girl, she says. It's time to rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. I raise my head, mumble and turn over, putting my pillow over my head. My mom yanks my pillow from off my head and starts tickling me. Okay, I'll get up. I shriek. The sun is so bright that I squint. I think I will go outside and play. I can't wait to get up now. My mom cooks me breakfast. I have eggs, bacon, toast, and orange juice. When I finish my breakfast, I brush my teeth, comb my hair, wash my face. And then change into my play clothes. I choose a bright pink and yellow tank top with jean shorts and blue sandals. My bike is in the garage where my dad keeps the cars and tools. As I pedal, my hair flies out behind me. I keep my mouth shut so that bugs don't get in. I am going down a big hill now. I can hardly pedal any more. My legs are moving so fast. I hang onto my handlebars tightly. I don't want to fall off. I finally am able to slow down as the road becomes level. I turn a corner and decide to go back home. I realize I now have to ride up the hill. I know I will be tired when I get to the top. 
I think that I will have some water now before I start to go up. Mmm, it tastes great. It is so clean and cold. Well, I know that I have a big trip ahead of me, so I need to get going. Bye-bye. The Perfect Place There is a place in my mind that is pure. Everything there is beautiful. Many flowers grow, and the grass is very green. The clouds are always white and fluffy. The tree's branches sweep the earth floor. You can hear the sound of a waterfall. It is roaring with life, and the water races. A bird calls in the distance, and as you listen, the sound gets closer. A flapping quite near makes me turn and look. A great, magnificent eagle flies over my head. The strength I see in his powerful wings amazes me. I am never thirsty or hungry. I live off the beauty that surrounds me in this perfect place. I walk on trails that lead me to breathtaking places. The beach is my favorite spot to end up. The sand between my toes is soft and cool. I love to lie down on the sand. I watch the sun go down. Sometimes the sun is a brilliant orange. The world seems like it is on fire. Waves lull me to sleep. The seagulls wake me up. In this perfect place I have learned so much. The animals and their homes are so precious. I have learned to respect the animals. They were here first. The sounds, smells, and sights are too perfect and full of life. There is no war here, no anger or stress. I don't have to worry about pollution or destruction. My perfect world exists only in my head. Maybe if we all work hard, my fantasy can become real. If I was tiny. Imagine what life would be like if you were two inches tall. You would have to be careful that nobody stepped on you. You would have to watch out for cats, dogs, and birds. It would be very dangerous, but just think of the things that you could do. You could live in a dollhouse or even a shoebox. You could use a bottle cap for a plate. You would have to wear doll's clothes. A stamp would make a lovely picture to hang on your wall. You could hide in a mouse hole or a drawer. You wouldn't need much food. You could probably live comfortably on the crumbs that people would leave on the table. A thimble would make a good cup. If you went outside, the grass would seem like a jungle. An insect would be huge and frightening. A puddle would seem to be an ocean. You could cross the puddle in a paper cup and use a spoon for an oar. A matchbox would make a good bed with a handkerchief as a bedspread. You'd brush your hair with a toothbrush, but you'd never find anything small enough to brush your teeth with. You could take a ride on the back of a mouse. You wouldn't find any books that were small enough to read, but you might read the back of a pill bottle. You could ride in a toy car and have a soup bowl for a swimming pool. A leaf could be your umbrella, and a mitten would make a great sleeping bag. If you used your imagination, you could think up something to use for almost all your purposes. Being small might be fun, but then again it would be frightening. I'd be afraid of my pet cat. I wouldn't want a book to fall on me. I would be afraid of being swept away by a big gust of wind. I think I'd rather be my size. Do people have the right to smoke in public? My father used to smoke. He got very ill. The doctor told him that he had to quit smoking. My father tried for a long time to quit. It was very difficult for him. Smoking is an addiction. After many months, my father finally gave up smoking, but he still craved a cigarette once in a while. 
He says that quitting smoking is the hardest thing that he has ever done. When my father did smoke, he smoked everywhere. He smoked in restaurants, stores, and many public buildings. Now, you are not allowed to smoke in a lot of public places. When my father smoked, the rules were not so strict. People could smoke just about anywhere. It really wasn't fair to the people who didn't smoke. Their clothes always smelled like smoke, and they breathed in secondhand smoke. Some people think that the secondhand smoke is actually worse for you than if you smoke yourself. People would smoke in their houses, and very young children would inhale the smoke that was in the air. Some people still smoke in their houses, and their children breathe in the smoke. Some restaurants have areas for smokers and non smokers, but usually the smoke drifts from one area to the other. There are some businesses that have banned smoking altogether. Personally, I think that smoking in public places should be completely banned. I don't think that I should have to breathe in another person's smoke if I choose not to smoke myself. It wouldn't be fair for a non smoker to get lung cancer because they had to be in a place where smokers were allowed to light up. I know that smoking is a powerful addiction and that it is very difficult to quit, but smokers should restrict their smoking to places where there is nobody else around. Lung cancer is an awful disease. Nobody should have to suffer with lung cancer. People should be educated about the dangers of smoking. Smoking should be banned in public places, but eventually I would like to believe that fewer people will smoke. It would be nice to live in a smoke free environment. The Trunk in the Attic. Last month, my grandmother asked me if I could help her to clean out her attic. I was happy that she asked me. My grandmother says that her attic is full of junk. I think that her attic is full of treasures. I helped her to dust and vacuum the attic. I pulled and pushed around boxes and crates. I helped her to wash the floors and walls. My favorite thing that I did was to sort through the old trunk that she had up there. The trunk had a rusty latch on it. It was a bit difficult to open. But my grandmother got a knife and pried the latch open. The trunk was full of all kinds of things. There were lots of clothes. Some of the clothes had been my grandmother's. There was a blue velvet dress that she had worn to a dance when she and my grandfather were dating. It was a beautiful dress, but there were a few moth holes in it. There were some of my mother's old clothes. There was a pair of bell bottom slacks that had bright flowers on it. I couldn't believe that my mother had ever worn something like that. There were some of my mother's old report cards. Some of her marks weren't very good. I had fun reading the report cards. There were photographs. There was a picture of my grandparents holding my mother when she was a baby. There was an old baseball glove that one of my uncles had owned. There was even one of my old dolls in there. One of her legs was missing. My grandmother said that I was rough on my dolls when I was little. I should have taken better care of my toys. There was even some old jewelry. I tried on some of the old clothes and jewelry. I told my grandmother that I liked looking through old things. My grandmother told me to keep whatever I wanted. She said that it was all junk. I still say that her trunk was full of treasures. If I could go back in my life, if I could go back in my life and do some things differently, this is what I would do. I would not waste so many hours in front of the television set. I would get out and enjoy my life rather than watching actors and shows. I would be a little more considerate of other people. 
I would realize that my mother has more to do than pick up after me. I would pay more attention in school. Tests are easier when you have paid attention rather than fooling around in class. I would save more money rather than spend it on useless things. I would read more. Reading is enjoyable and it opens the doors into all kinds of wonderful places, both real and imagined. I would learn to play an instrument. Music is always appreciated if it is played well. I would eat better foods. I would try to stay healthy through my diet and exercise. I would take more pictures and I would keep a journal. Memories are very precious. I would take the time to listen to what people have to say. People appreciate a good listener. I would take the time to enjoy each day as it comes. Sometimes I am so busy looking forward to what is coming up that I don't take the time to enjoy the day that I am living in. That's what I would do if I could go back in my life. In fact, I think I'll just make a habit of doing all of those things all through my life. Joking. Joking is good. Jokes can be very funny. Jokes can also be hurtful. Jokes can be tasteless too. It is not an easy thing to find jokes that do not offend anyone. Some jokes make fun of different races. Those jokes are not funny. They are hurtful. It is not right to tell racist jokes. Many jokes use bad language or are about questionable subject matter. These jokes are also not acceptable. Many people are highly offended by rude jokes. What some people find funny, others will not. Comedy is a very personal thing. Some people like slapstick comedy. That is the kind of comedy that the Three Stooges use. Some people like very subtle humor. Some people will laugh at just about anything. Sometimes it is not appropriate to laugh, but you feel like laughing anyway. Did you ever see anyone fall down? Did you feel like laughing when they fell down? You were probably worried that they had hurt themselves, yet the way that they fell was so funny that you felt like laughing. It's not funny when someone falls, but you can't help but laugh even though you try to hide it. Jokes and comedy differ from culture to culture. Many people from other countries come here and don't understand our comedy. Jokes and comedies are often geared toward our environment. Sometimes comedians make fun of the things that we do in our day to day lives, like going to the bank or going grocery shopping. We can all relate to that. Being a comedian is not an easy job. Telling jokes and making people laugh is extremely difficult. Jokes are fun, and they are funny if they are good. Jokes can get you into a lot of trouble if they are inappropriate, and sometimes they're just not funny and nobody laughs. Here's a joke Why does the cow wear a bell? Because its horns don't work. Do you get it? Do you think it is funny? Well, maybe it's not that funny. I told you that it was difficult being a comedian. Moving to another country. My friend Steve moved to another country. He had lived in Canada all his life and he moved to Japan. Life in Japan was very different for Steve than what he was used to. At first, Steve suffered from culture shock. His whole life seemed different. He was not used to the way of life in Japan. Steve was not used to the large crowds of people that walked up and down the streets in Japan. In his hometown in Canada, the streets were fairly quiet. Steve had to get used to the food. In Japan, the people eat a lot of fish. Steve had never eaten much fish before. Steve wanted pizza, but it was expensive in Japan. Steve said that he had to adjust his eating habits. The people in Japan have different customs than we do here in Canada. Steve didn't want to offend anyone, so he had to learn the customs. He had to learn about what Japanese people considered polite and rude. Sometimes in a foreign country, you can do something to insult someone without even realizing that you are being rude. At first, Steve had trouble with the language. 
He said that the only way to really learn the language is to talk to people. Steve talked to a lot of people. He made a lot of mistakes, but people were patient with him, and they tried to help him with his Japanese. It wasn't long before Steve felt more comfortable in his new surroundings. You have to be willing to learn new customs and a new language if you move to another country. Steve feels very comfortable in Japan and in Canada now. He is thinking about going to another country now. He thinks that he might like to try and live in Italy. I'm sure that he would get over his culture shock very fast if he moved there. Moving to a new country can be difficult, but if you are willing to learn, it can be a very rewarding experience. My doll. When I was an infant, I got a rag doll. It was a very plain little doll, and it wore a clown outfit and a clown's hat. I used to take that doll to bed with me every night. I couldn't go to bed without my doll. My mother used to pretend that the doll was talking to me. She would make the doll dance and sing songs. I would talk to the doll. My mother would answer for the doll, but I was a baby, and I thought that the doll was actually talking to me. That doll was my best friend. I took her everywhere. One time, I took her to a store with me, and I left her on a shelf in the store. We were halfway home when I realized that I didn't have my doll with me. I was very upset. My mother and I rushed back to the store. My doll was still there. I was so relieved. I hugged my doll and I promised myself that I would never leave her anywhere again. I couldn't imagine life without that doll. Through the years, the doll became less important in my life. I had other things to do, but the doll still sat on my bed during the day, and I still took it to bed at night. I gave that doll a lot of love when I was little. In fact, I love that doll so much that she looks tattered and torn now. There are parts of her face and hands that are almost worn away. I had a lot of other toys when I was little, but none of them were ever so important as that doll. I don't play with toys anymore, but that doll is still in my room. She sits in a special chair in the corner. I'll always have that doll, no matter how worn out she is. I'll always keep her and cherish her as part of my early childhood. Childhood. Creative people. Some people are just born to create. That's what I think. Some people just have the need to write stories, compose beautiful music, or paint pictures. Creativity seems to be inside them, and they need to let it out. It's good that we have people like that. Composers like Mozart and Chopin have given us music that is incredibly beautiful. It's not just the classical composers who have given us great pieces of music. There are modern composers who have written great songs also. Elton John is an example of someone who has composed many wonderful songs. Andrew Lloyd Webber has given us some very popular musicals like Cats and The Phantom of the Opera. There are so many talented and creative people in this world. When you visit an art gallery, you marvel at how artists are able to recreate realism or make up something that seems totally unreal yet beautiful. The American artist Norman Rockwell painted some pictures that actually look like photographs. He tried to portray life as it was in America. Through his paintings, one can get a good sense of American life through the years. On the other hand, artists like Jackson Pollock did not portray realism. Jackson Pollock painted abstract pictures. His paintings are just as good as Norman Rockwell's, but they are entirely different. Some books that we read are classics. Mark Twain portrayed American life through his characters. Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, Charles Dickens brought Victorian England to life through his books. Most people are familiar with his Christmas Carol, where the mean and miserable Scrooge learns the true meaning of Christmas. People don't have to read the classics. There are modern writers who entertain readers through their stories. Stephen King has written a number of horror stories. Some of his books have even been made into movies. We are lucky to have creative people who share their gifts with us. 
If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we can all share. If you are lucky enough to be creative, you should use your talents to create works of art that we all can share. I am clumsy. My mother says that I am clumsy. My father says that I am clumsy. I know that I am clumsy. I do things all the time that are clumsy. I fall down for no reason at all. If there is a crack in the sidewalk, I will be sure to trip on it and fall down. If I carry a plate of food in the cafeteria, I almost always either drop it or bump into someone with it. I don't try to do these things. It just happens. When I drink juice, I miss my mouth and get juice all over my shirt. I always have something spilled on my clothes. Last week I opened a jar of peanut butter. The jar flew out of my hands and landed upside down on the floor. There was a big glob of peanut butter on the floor. Yesterday I knocked over the sugar bowl. There was a big sticky mess on the floor. I bump my head when I get into the car. I rip my pants on things. I lose my money out of my pockets. I step on the cat's tail. I always feel bad when I do that because the cat thinks I don't love her. I don't mean to do these things. I am just a clumsy person. My parents tell me to slow down. I am always in a hurry. Maybe that's why I'm so clumsy. Maybe it's just the stage that I'm going through. If it is, I hope it is over soon. Being clumsy is no fun at all. If I could fly, I sometimes imagine what it would be like if I could fly like a bird. Just imagine what it would be like to soar into the sky, flying high above the trees. You could stand on high rooftops and never be afraid of falling. You would see so many things as you flew over rooftops and forests. You would feel incredibly free as you traveled from place to place, not bothered by road signs or traffic jams. If I could fly like a bird, I would start from my backyard and travel through town. I would look down on the houses and factories. When I got tired, I would land in a field and take a nap. I would travel above rivers and follow them as they wound along and emptied into lakes and oceans. I would fly above parks, and I would call out to the children as I flew high above them. I would dip and dive as I flew. I would soar up high and dive down low, so that I could almost touch the treetops. Have you ever flown? I know that you can't fly like a bird, but you might have taken an airplane ride. When you're in an airplane, you pass through clouds. It is exciting to take an airplane ride. I love taking airplane flights. I like to look down at the earth. When you are up that high, everything below you looks tiny. That's the closest I'll get to flying like a bird. But I can still use my imagination and spread my wings and soar high above the world, just like a bird.